Hello and welcome back with Callot's River Restoration. This is Sarah and I'm going to walk you through step by step how I'm going to transform this little hallway console and just give it a whole brand new vibe. Throughout this video, you can expect to hear my children yelling and shouting and playing in the background because I'm a mother of three boys. So anywho, I started off by sanding the top of this with a 150 grit sandpaper and my orbital sander. You see, I started doing this and I was sanding and sanding and sanding and then I realized it was going to take me three days to finally get this down because the previous finish was just very stubborn. So I pulled out my belt sander to get it down to that bare wood because I knew that that would go ahead and go right through that paint as well as that previous finish. And it did such a good job and it was super fast, but it also went through the veneer in a couple places, but it wasn't a total deal breaker because of the technique that I planned on doing on the table anyways. It felt like a deal breaker at the time. It sort of changed my game plan a little bit. In hindsight, I'm wondering if maybe I should have done a paint stripper, but honestly, it all worked out well. So I wiped off all the dust, brought that thing back inside, and I put a white wax on it because I thought that with a white wash, it might hide some of the imperfections. But the white wash wax didn't go over it quite as much as I wanted it to. So what I did was I put the white wax on and then I used a chalk paint and I did a dry brushing technique. So I went over the whole thing with this dry brushing technique. I took a chip brush and I just got a very small amount of paint on the end of my bristle and then I wipe it back and forth to mimic wood grain. Then I took a damp rag and I wiped it down just to get all of that white to really, I wanna see the wood underneath. So I wanted it all to kind of marry. I just wanted it to be a light stain. So I wiped and I brushed and I wiped and I think it turned out really, really nice. The white and the white wax blended really well to give it a nice sort of light weathered wood feel. I did end up using the white wax again over the top of that white wash and that worked out really well. It took really nicely. You couldn't even tell that I had made any mistake at all and it ended up being exactly what I was looking for. So happy mistake, yay. After I white waxed it, I used a paper towel and I just wiped off any excess wax and then also got all the wax off of the edges. I painted the original hardware with a metallic silver. Then I'm gonna go ahead and wipe down the whole base and get it nice and clean and ready for primer. When I wipe down my pieces, I use a vinegar and water solution on just a rag just to get them all clean so that there's no debris on them or anything that might make the paint not want to adhere to the piece. I primed this piece with kills just to make sure that I didn't have any bleed through. I'm also going to be using a lighter color, so I wanted to use something that would give me a good light base. I used an angle brush to cut in around the top. Kills is wonderful for primer. It's not super forgiving if you get it in a place where you don't want it. So I had to be really careful as I was cutting in around the top. It is time consuming. I actually have this on like fast forward. So it was slower than it even seems here. It's very meticulous work. So once I got it on the top though, I can just go ahead and slap it on the bottom. I really like to have all my brush strokes going the same direction when I'm painting and remember to have fun with it. So I like that. You might not like that. Play around with it. Do you express yourself and have fun. Like I was saying, Kills is a super nice primer anytime you're going to be using a light color because it really blocks out any stains that could potentially bleed through. And also, like if you're painting over something that's darker like this was, I'm not going to have to do a million coats of my paint. And I'm not going to have to worry about any bleed through coming through that light color that I'm going to be using. The 
color that I chose to use on this is called Zen Green. It's by Bare Chalk Paint. I have it mixed up at Home Depot. I used the same exact color in another video or tutorial that I made recently. And I have so much of it left and I loved the way that one turned out. So I decided to go ahead and use it again on this little piece. The style of the other piece really inspired the knobs on this one too. I absolutely love the way those silver knobs look on this Zen Green. And this green is so soft and so pretty. I just absolutely love it. And the color feels so perfect and suitable for it being the beginning of spring. It was just so fun to work with. To apply this color, I'm using my favorite angle brush. It's just a wood stir. I pick it up at the Home Depot. They're fairly affordable and I basically just have a million of them. So it was perfect for cutting in around the top and also it's great for getting into all those little nooks and crannies. I am really happy with this paintbrush. It gives me the kind of control that I need over my paint and I just have really good results with it. I only recorded myself doing the first coat, but I did two coats. So after I applied this first coat all over, I let it dry for a couple hours and then went back and applied my second coat. I do suggest doing two coats just to be on the safe side so that you are sure to have the coverage that you're looking for unless you're trying to do like a farmhouse shabby chic. To seal this I used clear wax by Bears Decorative Finishing Wax. I used a wax brush to apply it. It was super fast and easy. I'm really a big fan of applying this for sealer. I've had really good luck with the durability of it. I know some people are pro wax and some people are against it and I'm just kind of pro whatever works for you. I think that whatever you find that works for you, you should go ahead and do that. I don't know if this is something that I'll use forever. I'm always open-minded to trying new products, but right now I'm really happy with the finish that I'm getting from this. So, and I'm not really a snob when it comes to my products. I like to use what's easy for me to apply and what gives me good durability. I don't care what the brand name is. I also did a small amount or a light coat of wax over the very top again, just to give it nice and sealed because, you know, tops get a lot more wear and tear. If this were an end table or a coffee table, I might use a poly on the top, but because it's a hallway table, I don't think it'll get quite as much wear and tear, so I felt safe using the wax on the top. Remember that when you're waxing, a little goes a long way. You don't need a lot, just enough to get it covered. And if you do get a lot, you need to go ahead and wipe that excess off. Otherwise, it's going to take forever to cure, if it will cure at all. Now that it's all waxed, I'm ready to put the hardware on. And this is probably one of my favorite and least favorite parts of the whole thing. I don't know what it is about hardware, but it stresses me out sometimes. So this is the before and this is the after. So I had my husband helping me out to stage it and you can see him standing there holding my little macrame. And it's so funny because videos and pictures are just so different. Here's a few of the pictures I took. Much easier to crop out the feet and the random arm holding up my macrame. I'm really pleased with how it turned out. I'm really hoping that it flips fast in the marketplace. Thank you so much for checking out my tutorial. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time with Calitz River Restoration. Bye.